28th of July, 2025. Frontier Flight 2551 had just taken off from Philadelphia, carrying 99 people on its way to Atlanta. The climb was smooth, the weather was clear, everything looked routine, but just four minutes in, one of the engines started bleeding oil. The pilots shut the engine down midair with 99 people on board and a full tank of fuel. Now they had to land fast on one engine overweight and with no electronic guidance. And if this landing attempt failed, there would be no second chance, only a deadly crash. This is the survival story of Frontier Flight 255 on, where one wrong move could have ended everything. Flight 2551 had just left the ground from Philadelphia. The Airbus A320 Neo, packed with a total 99 passengers and crew headed to Atlanta, was climbing through clear skies. Everything looked normal and routine when it reached 10,000 feet above the ground. The pilots took a right turn heading 251 degrees and a climb to 12,000 feet. But just seconds later, something went so wrong that made it an instant headline. In the cockpit, the pilots saw something no one wanted to see so soon after takeoff. The oil pressure was dropping in the number two engine, the right one. The oil level in that engine was not just low, but dangerously low. Meanwhile, ATC cleared them to climb to 21,000 feet, but the pilot replied that they wanted to hold it at 12,000 feet for the time being. Because to the crew, this was a full-blown emergency. The jet was flying on Pratt & Whitney PW 1100G engines. These were powerful, fuel-efficient and quieter than older models. But this version had a history. Its high-pressure turbine, which is a part deep inside the engine that spins at incredible speed, had already caused problems for other planes. This turbine is like the heart of the engine, and when the oil stops flowing, it's like stopping the blood supply to the heart. So without oil pressure, the engine could overheat, shut down, or worse. But these pilots were sharp, but they immediately grabbed the emergency checklist, flipped to the page for engine failure, and followed the steps word for word. Fuel cut, hydraulics off. The right engine was completely shut down, and now the whole flight was flying depending on only one engine, the left one. It's like trying to steer a bicycle with one pedal. One mistake and things could go out of control. Besides, what if the left engine also shuts off in midair? Can they make it back? Without wasting a moment, the pilots picked up the radio. And what they said next would trigger alarms on the ground. The captain explained to the air traffic control what was happening and said that they needed to go back urgently. Permission was granted. The plane made a sharp turn heading back to Philadelphia, but all they had was one good engine with no guarantees. Even worse, the aircraft had only been in the air for a few minutes. That meant the fuel tanks were still heavy, so it was gonna be an overweight landing, which was too risky. But luckily, the approach was steady. ATC asked them to drop to 10,000 feet. And then came another handoff. The approach controller checked in. Expect runway 27 left but it was the wrong runway. However, the plane kept descending, the landing gear dropped, and they were minutes from the runway. The controller offered more time in the air, which was a smart choice. It bought them a few extra minutes to think and prepare. The standard drill kicked in. Notify dispatch, alert the cabin crew. Dispatch started prepping emergency services. In the cabin, flight attendants got the coded message, precautionary landing and the captain set the countdown. It was 12 minutes to touchdown. They were cleared to descend to 3,000 feet. The approach was set. Just one chance to land, no second try. But instead of a guided landing, they were cleared for a visual one. That meant no electronic help, just their eyes and nerves, one engine out, no margin for error. The pilots were flying totally on instinct and muscle memory alone. Air traffic control pointed them to the airport, six miles out. The only good part was the runway was visible clearly. Emergency crews were already lined up along the runway. The wind was calm, the runway was clear. Finally, the plane touched down clean. No wonder it was flawless landing under pressure, but not without risk. However, the danger wasn't over because when they rolled off the runway and stopped, the fire crew couldn't approach until the captain shut everything down. Jet engines can blast with deadly force even after landing. He ran the final check, set the brakes, and gave the all clear. There were no flames, and all 180-plus people on board made it out safe. It looked like a lucky escape from a close call. 
On the runway, ground crews rushed in. When they looked inside the engine, they were shocked. Oil was barely there. The system had nearly run dry. But how was that possible? What caused the oil to vanish so suddenly? This is where the real story is revealed. Under U.S. law, when a plane has an engine failure or emergency landing, the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, steps in. They're the top investigators. If a plane almost goes down, they want to know why. Right now, the NTSB has opened an official case, and that means they've likely assigned a lead investigator and started collecting everything. Cockpit recordings, flight data, engine parts, crew interviews, and maintenance records. Usually, they share a short report in 30 days. But so far, there's nothing. Just confirmation that they're digging in. The FAA also confirmed the incident. So apart from these obvious basics, what else do we know? Just one thing, it was purely an engine trouble. The pilots reported low oil pressure, that's serious. Jet engines always run hot, oil isn't optional. It cools, lubricates, and keeps the spinning parts from tearing themselves apart. When oil pressure drops, things can go wrong fast. For example, bearings can seize working, heat can build, and in the worst case scenario, the engine can explode or catch fire. So no oil means no engine. Now the investigation will zoom in on that oil system. Did a pipe burst? Did a pump stop working? Did a sensor give bad readings? Was there a leak? They'll check every hose, every valve, every sensor. Even one tiny broken piece can crash a plane. So far, there's no cause listed, no signs of why it happened. If we talk about pilot errors, they in fact did everything right. They followed their training, they brought everyone home, and that'll matter in the final report. But until then, two questions remain. Why did the engine fail? And even worse, as long as we don't get any answer, could it happen again in any of the next flights? This aircraft was an Airbus A320neo, powered by Pratt & Whitney's PW1100GJM engines. High-tech, fuel-efficient, and powerful. But they're also complex. Their oil system isn't simple. Inside the engine, a pressure drop could mean a leak, a failed pump, or a busted bearing. It might even be a jammed gearbox or a faulty sensor, but whatever it was, the crew didn't take chances. They shut the engine down immediately and made no restart attempt. That tells us something. They believe the engine might be moments from failure. And that decision wasn't just a guess. Under federal rules 14 CFR 121, pilots are allowed to return to base with one engine if the other one is believed to be unsafe. And in this case, the crew followed the book thoroughly. If you do some research, it wasn't the first time something like this happened. Back in 2018, an Indigo A320neo saw the same kind of low oil pressure alert just after takeoff. That crew turned back immediately. Later, investigators found a small maintenance error during engine assembly. So the problem isn't new. Even in 2019, the FAA issued an urgent airworthiness directive for similar Pratt engines the PW1500G and PW1900G models used on other aircraft like the A220 and Embraer E2 jets. What was the issue? Oil leaks from the supply tube and the fuel oil cooler. Just tiny parts but huge consequences, the Flight 255. One's engines weren't the same models, but they're in the same family. And these engines share design DNA, which means similar problems could show up again. Now the investigators are going through every maintenance log when the engine was last checked, whether oil issues were reported, if contaminated oil was ever used. They'll pull cockpit recordings, listen to the alarms, hear the pilots' voices. Was the pressure drop sudden or slow? Did the data recorder show a flat line or something more sinister? But there's still one unanswered question, a possibility that keeps investigators awake. Honestly, the engine in question isn't just any engine. Recently, it has already been under a very different spotlight. Just look at what happened back in April. Frontier Flight 3506 had a loud engine failure right after takeoff. That one was due to a cracked turbine in the high pressure section. But in this case, no bang, just low pressure. Maybe it's a design flaw in the oil system of the PW1100G engine. We've seen it before, like in 2019 with the PW1500 series. One bad finding and the whole fleet could get grounded. Besides, across the aviation world, cracks, especially the microscopic ones,
have been spreading like whispers through this engine line. In July of last year, Pratt recalled nearly 1,200 of these GTF engines because of minute cracks in the turbine blades. Those cracks weren't related to oil, but they still grounded planes by the hundreds. Why? Because when turbine blades snap at high speed, they can rip an engine apart from the inside, showering shrapnel into sensitive systems. And that alone would raise concerns, but there's more. Separate from the cracks, federal regulators also flagged oil system issues. Specifically, oil seals, which are tiny but critical components, were found faulty on this exact engine model, the PW-1100G, which powers the Airbus A320neo. The FAA even issued what's called an airworthiness directive, aviation's version of a red flag warning. Other bulletins, some tied to unrelated engine shutdowns on different planes, hinted at a broader pattern. This engine family wasn't just fighting one problem. It was juggling many things, and this brings us back to Flight 2551. When the oil pressure dropped, the cockpit crew had to act fast. Perhaps due to that urgency, no flames erupted. No parts broke through the engine casing. That alone is good news, which suggests the engine didn't explode from within. If the investigators find no leak, no heat damage, the problem may have been a faulty sensor, a false alarm triggered by a dying wire, not a dying engine. But if they do find a breach, no matter how small it is, it could point to a systemic flaw. A flaw already whispered about in documents buried within FAA reports and service bulletins. For now, the cockpit crew is being praised for following protocol. But you cannot fly depending on the timely action of the pilots because that's not safe. We must have an idea of what really caused this. One likely reason, a burst oil line. These lines carry pressurized oil to and from the engine. If even one cracks, oil sprays out instantly. It's like cutting a vein. Pressure crashes, the system fails. Investigators will now look for signs of this like dark stains, oil-soaked parts, residue near the pipe. Another suspect is a broken bearing or seal inside the engine. In engines like the PW1100G, the number four bearing is a weak point. If it fails, oil doesn't leak outside, instead it leaks inside, right into the hot spinning parts of the compressor. And if that really happened, the only clue might be a scorched trail deep within the engine. Then there's the oil pump. The engine uses a gearbox to push oil around. Basically, it's a complicated set of moving pieces. If that gearbox broke, the pump would stop. Eventually, no oil would be flowing, no pressure will be there, causing a total failure. These kinds of breakdowns are rare, but when they happen, they come without warning. Besides, there's also a chance it was just a false alarm due to a bad sensor. These warning lights rely on tiny electric signals. If one wire shorts out or a connector comes loose, the system could scream danger even when everything is fine. Moreover, it's happened before. In fact, on Frontier Flight 3508, the same kind of alert turned out to be a bad reading. But in mid-air, pilots can't take that chance and they must act like it's real, because sometimes it is. Apart from these, could something has struck the engine? A bird? Or debris? It's possible. But there was no noise, no impact, or no signs. So it makes this theory unlikely, but not impossible. Whatever the reason, the crew made the right call. Does it mean the planes cannot fly on one engine? Yes, twin-engine jets actually can fly on one easily. But here's the risk. If the oil kept leaking, if something else went wrong, the second engine could also fail. Then the plane wouldn't be flying. It would be directly falling and a deadly crash would happen. Plus, flying to Atlanta is a two hours journey. It could have meant landing overweight with low fuel or worse, no power at all. Just imagine. So what do you think happened inside that engine at 10,000 feet? Was it a hidden flaw waiting to strike or just a false alarm that nearly turned deadly? And more importantly, would you feel safe flying on a plane with the same engine tomorrow? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want more real-life aviation close calls decoded like this, subscribe now and turn on notifications. Because sometimes the difference between routine and disaster is just a few drops of oil.